Hello, this is Oliver Lucanis from Below Water, from the home studio in Montreal, Canada. Seems we have a lot of time on our hands now, so I thought we'd do a piranha video to show people some ways to identify some of the species and show a bit of their behavior in the wild. In this video, you will see 25 piranha species, but in total there are 31 Cerasalmus, 3 Pygocentris, 5 Pristoprycon, plus 2 Cataprion and 1 Pygopristus. So we currently have around 42 species that we would call piranhas. That is a lot of fish, and some are quite similar to each other. The genera in Pacus and piranhas are a mess, and new genetic testing suggests that there will be changes in the future. Basically, Pristobrycon striolatus, Cataprion, and Pygopristus make one group. The second one are the three Pygocentris, and all the others form three clades. The Aureus group, that includes, among others, Manuelli, Cariospinus, and Eigenmani, the Maculatus clade, that also includes Cerulatus, Spiloplora, and Branti, and the Rhombios clade, that includes most of the other fish that we discussed today. The Serra part of Cerasalmus actually does not refer to the saw-like teeth at all, but rather refers to the keel on the belly of the piranhas. Here the scales have fused and formed this sharp serrated edge, likely so that it is harder for predators to swallow the fish. Most species of Paku also have this structure. One way to help identify piranhas is to ask where is the black, because the black markings on the tail are a pretty good way to see what species you may be looking at. For example, Cerasalmus rhombius, the black piranha, has this black bar across the tail. But often several species occur together, so don't make yourself crazy trying to identify these fish. That is never an easy task. The thing I get asked the most is what species can be kept together, and that depends on how the tanks are set up. If you don't have much room, say 75 gallons or 200 something liters, the best choice is the red belly piranha, Pygocentris naturari. This species also comes in a more yellow form from the south of South America. If there's a corpse to dispose of, well, that can go very quick. And you can see here that all kinds of piranhas and other fish get in on the act. These Pygocentris cariba make a mess when they take the corpse apart. So Astyanax and even little Aphiocharax, bloodfin tetras, eat the smaller bits that get knocked loose. If you have more room, you could try Pygocentris caribe or Pygocentris piraya, which is the largest piranha species, at least by weight, and it will get over 50 centimeters or 18 inches. All three of these species start to calm down after about two inches or five centimeters. So I would say that this is the size to try and get a group together. Piranhas in groups always require some patience and you have to be ready to lose some fish in the process. I would not feed live animals to piranhas because first of all, few of the species actually kill other fish. And second, you can introduce diseases to your aquarium that way. These fish don't go out and kill, they just dispose of the already dead. The other fish that work great in groups are Pygopristus denticulata, but they are more like a mean pacu than a piranha, also feeding on some seeds. These are often found in blackwater rivers and show a really nice yellow coloration with blood red fins. Cataprion, the wimple piranha, is a specialized scale eater. They have teeth to lift the scales off other fish and then they swallow the scales that get knocked loose. Scales of, are of course hard to digest, so in their stomach the scales end up stacked like a package of Pringles. My favorite genus is Pristobrycon, because this group of five species has the most beautiful piranhas. They are quite functional in small groups, meaning that you will get some bitten off fins and damage, but usually no casualties. In nature, piranhas usually breed when the rainy season has flooded otherwise dry land, and at the time there is tons of food available for the young and shallow water places that the males can use to build and defend their nests. At that time, the color often changes. Most piranhas turn dark or black, but these Pristobrycon striolatus get these crazy looking tiger stripes. Once the males have established their territories, they will make these shallow nests at more or less equal distance and then try to entice the females to come in and lay their eggs. The males then guard the nests and area by themselves until the larvae are free swimming. As beautiful as this habitat looks, it is like this for just a few weeks of the year. 
The rest of the year, it is either dry or just a swampland, or cloudy because all that algae will bloom from the nutrients of the decaying plants. Pristobrycon maculipinus occurs in small clearwater creeks. It has big green spots and bright red fins, maybe the most beautiful of all piranha species. And it has an equally nice sister species in Pristobrycon cariospinus, in the rapids of larger rivers. The spots are smaller, but the fins are also red. This is filmed in the middle of a rapid, so the camera is under a huge boulder and this group of Pristobrycon cariospinus would stay around this area, attacking smaller fish, mostly characins. I think the small fish are exhausted when they come through the rapids and maybe a little bit unaware, so the fin-biting piranhas have an easy time to feed. In the aquarium they get along quite well, and just like all piranhas they don't need live foods. I feed them with shrimp and some raw chunks of fish. They don't bite each other much unless you stop feeding them for several days. In part 2 we'll look at the largest group, the real Sarasalmus. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so we can do more of these videos and click on part 2 to see all the other species.